All right, welcome to the second part of this Svelte tutorial where we are going to build out the user interface of our application. So we did all the user interface setup in terms of installs in the previous video. So make sure you do everything I did in that video. But right now we are good to go to start building with Tailwind CSS and Daisy UI. So for anyone new to Svelkit, inside of this source folder is kind of like our entire application is a basic way to view it. And inside of this routes folder right here are the routes for our application. Routes is a folder based structure. So the first page.svelte in here is actually the page.svelte for localhost 5173, just this route. If we were inside the login folder, which we're going to make eventually, that's going to serve the actual content for localhost 5173 slash login. But we're going to get into that in a second. For now, we can start our project and to see what it currently looks like by saying npm run dev. And so you'll see it's just the basic boilerplate code right here. And this code is coming from our plus page.svelte. There is also the layout.svelte, which we are going to use in this video. And layouts are useful for when you want something to wrap around your entire application. For example, something like a nav bar. So a basic understanding of the layout is that it wraps around our page. So we can have a bunch of content up here. And then this slot is all the content of our page.svelte. So technically the whole code of our application right now is this script. And then inside the slot is this code right here. So above our page.svelte, I want to create a basic nav bar for our users. So right here, we are going to make our nav bar. I'm going to make a div which is going to be fixed to the top of our page. So I'm going to say class is equal to, first of all, I'm going to give it a background of base 100. I'm also going to justify between, which is going to give some space between the nav bar elements, which I'll talk about in a second. And most importantly, I want to make it fixed with a top of zero, a left of zero and a right of zero. This is going to make it fixed and span across our entire page. Inside of here, I'm going to make a div class is equal to nav bar which is coming from Daisy UI. I'm going to give it a max width of 3XL, an MX of auto, and another justify dash between. What this is going to do is it's going to make our nav bar span up to 3XL so it doesn't go across the entire screen. And once it hits this 768 pixels kind of breakpoint, it's then going to center it to the middle of the screen. And so now inside of here, I'm going to make a left side of nav bar and then right side of nav bar because justify between is part of flex and flex box. And what it does is it will take the two elements inside of this div and give them the furthest width apart. So I'm gonna make a div right here for the left side and a div right here for the right side. So we can make a simple link to our homepage by saying a href is equal to slash class is equal to btn, btn dash ghost is a button styling I like, and then text dash XL. And this is just going to say pokey page. So if we save this, we can then go over to our project and see that it actually looks like this. And then we can also make another link to a user's page. Right now we don't have a user route, but we can just make it so we can work with it later. And class is gonna be equal to btn, btn-ghost, and just my page. Again, we're gonna add authentication and stuff like that later. This is just the styling. And so on the right side of the nav bar, I'm going to create a button for the user to log in. Instead of just doing a href, I'm going to do a bit of a different syntax where you say on click is equal to this on click will then run a function based on the click event. So we can make an arrow function inside of here and we can have it run go to go to is something that comes from the Svelte navigation here, which is just imported by itself. But go to is a different way to send you the user to different links in your application. For example, we can say go to slash login. And then we can close the button like this, do a slash button and make a login button. I'm going to explain it more later, but I'm doing an on click here because the logout button is going to have an on click that's not just going to redirect us to a certain route. It's going to manage our super base session, which again, I'll get into later. And so we can see this login button here. It's going to take us to the login route, but there's going to be nothing there right now. I'm also going to make a little span that's going to say, the current user. So I'm going to hard code this for now, but eventually we're going to add to this. I'm just going to make the classes equal to text dash white and text dash large and margin left of two. And I'm going to copy over the login button, but instead just console.log logging out. This is just so we can mess with it later. 
So it doesn't look super perfect right now, but we are going to show these different elements based off if the user's logged in or logged out. So this is what it's gonna look like for the time being. And so now we can make a very basic landing page using Daisy UI. They give us something called a hero component, which makes a landing page pretty much your full height of your screen here. So we can go into the plus page dots felt, which remember is sitting right below our nav bar and say div class is equal to hero min height of screen and bg dash base dash 300. Inside of this hero page, we then have a div class of hero dash content, which is going to center our content to the middle and kind of put it in the middle of the hero page. Inside of here, I'm going to make a div class is equal to max width of medium. So kind of constricting our content so it doesn't go across the entire page and then text dash center. And I'm just going to make some very basic things here like h1 welcome to pokey page, which I'll make text dash white font dash bold text dash let's say 4xl so it wants to be like a big text saying welcome to the site and then i'm going to make a paragraph where it's going to say create an account to make your own pokey page with your own unique url and i'll do class is equal to py dash six so this is going to put padding in the y direction to kind of separate the elements out and then an href here to slash login which is going to say create an account and this is going to be that class btn and then btn-ghost like we've always been using. Actually, I'll do btn-primary for this one. All right, so this is a very simple landing page. You can make this cooler if you want, but it gives you the general idea of the site. And so let's say we wanted to go to this slash coopercode3 at gmail.com route. If we go there right now, it's going to say the route is not found. And so when you have this type of slash, and it could be really anything after this, like it could be coopercodes2 or coopercodes1, you're going to have this thing called a slug because this is a dynamic route, which means this route's always changing. And so to create a dynamic route inside of Svelkit, you're gonna go into your routes. And remember guys, it's folder-based routing. So if we wanna go one thing in, we're gonna make a folder. And then we're going to make a email route like this. And it's interesting, this doesn't mean the route is email. It means that whatever they put after the slash is gonna be saved into a little email variable. So if we make a plus page dot svelte for this route in this plus page dot svelte, I'm just going to copy over our page dot svelte to make it simple. And remember, this is going to be a localhost 5173 slash, let's say coopercodes3 at gmail.com. This right here is then going to get saved into a variable called email, which we can access in a second. So I'm going to say script lang is equal to ts. And to access this slug variable, we have to get access to the page. And so you can import page from app slash stores. And then we can get the email variable by saying dollar sign colon email is equal to dollar sign page dot params dot email. And this is referencing this little email right here. And so if we change our content of the page to say, let's say the user's email right here, and I'm just gonna delete these other lines, then save this. You're then going to see that whatever we change this route to, it's going to change the email to. And so this is how we get the specific user. And it could also be something like this. It doesn't have to be the email, but boom, this is how we save that variable. And just to explain the syntax here, this dollar sign means that it's reactive, which is a super important part of Svelkit. This is a very basic reactive example where if page ever changes, the value of page is what dollar sign page means, then it's going to update this email variable. And so whenever we change the route, it's then going to update the page with a new variable like that. And so let's create a basic looking, and so let's create the basic interface for the user's page here. So I'm going to say emails page like this. So it's gonna say my emails page, and I'm gonna make it a max width of 2XL to give it more space for all of our Pokemon cards. And I'm gonna say P class is equal to, let's do PY of three max width of medium, and then MX dash auto. This is going to make it so it's a little bit cut short. And this is going to be our user's description. So user description here. And so right under whose page is going to show off the user description. Then I'm going to make a little grid for the Pokemon cards on someone's page. So we can say grid, grid dash calls dash three. And then I'll we'll just make one simple card where I'll say div class is equal to card background of let's say slate 700, but you can pick your own color there if you like margin of four so to give some margin around each card shadow dash large to give that cool shadow effect and then shadow dash blue 
Again, you can choose, but I like the darker shadow of 900. And so now we have to say div class is equal to card dash body for the content of each card. And then I'm gonna make another div class is equal to text dash center to make all the text centered inside of here. There's eventually going to be an image for a Pokemon where I, the source isn't gonna exist quite yet. So I'm just gonna say source is equal to an empty string. Yep. And then the alt is gonna say Pokemon image. And then the class is gonna be width of 32, height of 32, because these are all squares and then an mx dash auto to center it to the middle and just for testing i'm going to do a background of gray let's say 500 because we're not going to have an image quite yet and we can change the alt just to pokemon now i'm going to make a little h2 here for the pokemon name so i'm going to say like pikachu class is equal to text dash white text dash 2xl and then font dash bold it's going to give a nice name for the pokemon and then the type of pokemon so p is going to be I don't know, Pikachu electric. Uh, I'm showing my lack of Pokemon knowledge right now. <laughs> but I'm going to make that class of text-info so it's blue. All right, so this is what our Pikachu currently looks like. There's no Pikachu image yet, but it's just going to fit within the square here. And if we put another card like this on our site, it's going to show them in order like this. And so that's all we're going to do for now. For any of the kind of editing page stuff, we are going to do that when we get there. So this is kind of the basic introduction to all of our UI elements that we're going to use. Now let's get into actually setting up real Superbase authentication in the next video.